How does fishing in both series help keep you on your game? Uh, you know, because you fish both series, the FLW and the bass. Do you think that helps you stay in the zone when you're fishing? You know, whenever I'm fishing both, like you said, both series, if you're, there's positives and there's negatives. You know, the negative thing is, the first of all, is being away from the family bunch. That's really, really hard. Uh, the positive thing is fishing a lot of tournaments in a row like that if you're if you get any momentum going you can carry that momentum over uh from one tournament to the next you know once or me personally whenever i'm fishing that many events you know i can be getting uh you know it's tiring but your mind all you think about is fishing and it just kind of gets me focused and and uh makes me I think make better decisions in the long run you know the negative thing is it's a lot like the positive you can carry that positive momentum whenever you got it going on but you can also start that negative you know you can have if, it can snowball real really quick if you're having bad tournaments you know it can carry one after the other uh, that's the good that's the good thing and the bad thing about fishing a lot of tournaments you know I'm the type of fisherman that I want to fish as much as I possibly can. Uh, the more I fish, the better I do. I'm not a guy that can set off two or three weeks and then come right back and figure it out real quick. After a day today, like uh, the first day of the classic, you're we're now driving to get to the weigh-in. What kind of things are going through your mind? Are you thinking about the fish, the couple fish that you maybe lost? Did you think about what's what's what are you thinking right now? Well, uh, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do tomorrow. You know, uh, a lot of things changed today. I was really really fortunate to catch what I caught today because a lot of the water I was planning on fishing got muddy and uh, so I was fortunate to catch what what I caught today you know I'm already thinking uh, you know kind of how I'm going to uh, tackle tomorrow you know I, what, more than likely road. what I'll probably do is go back and fish a little bit of the stuff that I did today and then I'll probably start uh, just looking around and, and uh, trying to develop a new pattern that'll last the rest of the week. You know, all you want in a three or four day tournament is after the first day, you want to be in striking distance. You know, in some lakes, uh, it's it's different. You know, you go to a lake that has, doesn't have a whole lot of big fish, you know, you got to be pretty close to the leader. But Gunnersville, you know, if I'm within five pounds of the leader, that's all I can ask for. And then the next day, I want the same thing. And then the third day, you know, I want to be within striking distance where that third day, whenever you have that magical day, then you can uh, hopefully come back and win the tournament. When you're fishing a tournament, you, when you get off the water, do you check to see where you stand? If, like like for us today, is bat, we have bass track. Yeah. But do you... Now that we're off the water, I guess you're allowed to do whatever you you know you want to get to the to the weigh in and weigh the fish in. But do you can you go online and check? I don't. Is that allowed? Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it is. The tournament's over with, but uh, that's the point. The tournament's over with. Nobody else is fishing. My position uh, is set now. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. So the best thing for me to do is get to the weigh in and and. Uh, get those fish weighed in and, and you know just start thinking about tomorrow that's that's uh there's nothing i can change now i mean i'm i'm not thinking about today i'm already starting to uh figure things hopefully figure some things out for tomorrow last year at the classic you were one of the favorites came what sixth place last year uh in that neighborhood i'm not sure sixth seventh or eighth somewhere in there that did does that amount of pressure that's put on you from media and from spectator boats and stuff does that help you become a better angler and when you're in a, a situation like this the this year's classic 
Yeah, I mean, you, you know, last year I was a rookie in the aspect of the big number of spectator boats. You know, there was times yesterday that, or last year that I had 70, 75 boats watching me, and it kind of uh, shocked me last year. And this year, I, I'm a little more prepared for it. You still uh, are at the mercy of the spectator uh, boats, to, you know, per se, but I've learned to deal with it a little more, you know, like which rotation I'm gonna go to. You don't wanna pull on a, you know, you gotta know where your where your followers are gonna be at so they don't mess up water that you wanna fish in front of you. You know, today I pretty much spent most of my time in one general area, you know, just bounce around here and there and, and uh, you know, it, it worked out, but I could kinda control those uh, spectator boats. Yeah, is there a way to make it so that they actually can help you? Does that make sense? I've actually had people say to me, the best, one of the things Kevin Van Dam does better than anyone is he controls the spectator boats so that they push fish towards him. Is that possible? Yeah. Well, as many fish as he catches, I would say it is possible, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not smart enough to figure something like that out. The best <laughs> thing I can do is just, uh, is just fish and, and uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. I don't know what that goofball on the side of the road is doing. <laughs> uh, do you ever get nervous when you go on stage? Like, what, what's going to happen today? You know, I don't get nervous. Uh, you know, being in front of a lot of people. That you know, I, I grew up playing ball and and speaking in front of a lot of kids and stuff. What I do get nervous about is is you only get so many chances a year to really uh, make a you know, say something really good about your sponsors and you just want to go up there and, and uh, you know, say the right thing. You don't want to sound like a commercial, but, you know, you want to you want to talk about your sponsors and because, the spon you know, without my sponsors, I wouldn't be able to do this. You know, I've been doing it long enough now that uh, if I didn't have support from sponsors, I wouldn't do it. I mean, it's just, uh, it's too hard to do. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an expensive sport. Yes. But you can, uh, you know, with the right support from sponsors and then uh, cashing some checks, you know, it's it's definitely a way to make a good living. And you know, I'm living proof if I can do it, I believe uh, anybody can do it. After five years of as a professional angler, what be, what drives you to become a better angler and continue at such a high level? Well, the main thing is. In, this is how I support my family and that. The better that I do, the better uh, lifestyle my family has. And that's that's probably, you know, one of the highest pushers, you know, of me. But, you know, me growing up playing ball and stuff, you know, I think athletes and uh, I'm not an athlete now, I'm about 20 pounds overweight, but uh, I, think, I think we have a mentality that there's nobody out there that puts more pressure on us than ourselves. You know, I just don't like to lose. I mean, if we were running the foot race, playing baseball, or, or shooting marbles, I, I just, I don't like losing. And, you know, fishing's a hard sport because it's not like basketball where you win, you know, you got a 50% chance of winning. I mean, in all honesty, fishing, you know, like right now, I got a one in 55 chance of winning this tournament, you know, and, and a lot of elite events, it's one in a hundred. So yeah. it's not like, I mean, you can't, you just gotta, you know, I just don't like to lose. And, and you know, for me to stay consistent, that's the biggest thing. That's, that's kind of my internal goal is, I just want to have chances to win tournaments. And the more chances that you have to win, you know, you, the more tournaments, the more tournaments you're going to win, you're just you're just around the top. And, and well, being consistent like that in the FLW series and in bass is why you're ranked number one in the world. Do you know that? Do you, yeah, I know that. Does, does that put a target on your back from other anglers? Well, it, I don't. It's not. I don't see it as being the number one angler in the world. I see it being the guy that's hot right now. And I've had you know the last actually three years. You know, I've, I've won some tournaments. You know, the way that I fish, though, it's I tend to I tend to go for the win a lot, and, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it back it backfires. And and my main goal, you know, if 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 I could change one thing in my fishing, I want my bad tournaments to be 40th place finishes. You know, not 
80s or 90s. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing. If you just stay, you know, 40 and above and have chances to win, you're going to win tournaments. I mean, uh, it's going to – ball's going to roll on your side of the court at some time. We grew up as a basketball player like myself. Favorite basketball player growing up was? Michael Jordan. Of course. You know, whenever I was uh, in high school, Michael – in his prime and I mean I can remember buying a pair of you know the Jordan, Jordan. basketball shoes <laughs> yeah. and, and that day you know it was just like I mean you just you think you play somewhat like him of course I didn't but uh, yeah he's by far you know the most enjoyable player I've ever watched. Do you still watch basketball today? Do you enjoy it as much as you did when you were younger? No I uh, to be honest with you I'd rather watch football now I just yeah. I don't know if I got burned out or what when I do watch basketball I think I just I you know I, I I like like March Madness and when yeah. the NBA's in the playoffs and stuff. But just to watch a game, I would almost rather watch a good girls game uh, or a women's game than I would uh, a men's game. It's just you know I have three girls and and uh, it's just neat. You know you don't have this a lot of times in women's basketball. You don't have the superstar factor. You know you yeah got, you got a team you know trying to work together and. I still enjoy watching all of it, but if I had to pick, you know, it'd be playoffs or watching women's basketball. If you could take one person fishing, anyone, celebrity-wise, anyone in ever, dead, alive, whoever, who would it be? At? Who would it be? And where would you go take them fishing? Uh, that's a hard question. Uh, let me think on it just for a second, because I want to make sure. Yeah, don't offend anyone. Yeah. <laughs> if it's dad, it's dad. That's all right. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time fishing with my dad, and that's, you know, that's who taught me how to fish. So, uh, dad, d did dad? So you did dad? When when you were younger, did your dad take you competitively fishing or just fun fishing? Uh, he started off taking me fun fishing, and then about the time that I got old enough to start tournament fishing, my dad was out of out of tournament fishing and and I wanted to do it. I had uncles that did it and I kind of started getting back into it and started doing good and that that made him want to do it also. So we, you know, we kind of teamed up there for 10 years or so and we were pretty successful, you know, regionally. We won a lot of money and, and it was it was cool because we won a lot of money but also I won a lot of money fishing uh, with my dad. So yeah. that, that was the biggest thing. But you know, if I if I could pick one person, it would probably be you know, it, it may, it may, Michael Jordan. I mean, that somebody like that, you know. Uh, because it wouldn't be fun to whoop his ass and yeah. something. Yeah. No offense to him, of yeah. course, but I, that would be a dream come true. He'd probably beat me, but <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, he. he uh, you know, I I, I want to kind of change that. I think, you know, I was pretty young. Grandpa passed away. I mean, too young to remember him, and I've heard a lot of the good stories about him. I think if there was probably anybody, you know, that I could take fishing, it would probably be him. Just that's a better you know, answer. Yeah, and we would go to, you know, we'd go to Arkansas River whenever they were spawning and throw spinner baits and <laughs> wear them out. Yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, do you share any when you're pre-fishing? And, and I'm, uh, I'm completely confused about the three days fishing, then two days off, and then one day, and then the tournament. Yeah. But th that's a whole nother, a whole nother story. But do you share any? Do you talk to people and share spots or share lures with anyone while you're pre-fishing? Uh, I really don't. I do have a. Uh, Ed, I travel with Edwin. You know, we stay together, and we we talk about fishing. You know, we talk about general ideas. We bounce ideas off each other as far as exact spots and exact uh, lures we really don't uh, we really don't share a whole lot of that uh, it kind of depends on on the tournament you know uh, but yeah we I mean we bounce ideas and it, it keeps me thinking talking to him at night it keeps me thinking about things that I need to do and I think it's the same for him I think bouncing ideas off me it keeps him thinking and doesn't get him locked into just one thing. And then 
last but not least, you got in the, you're going next, you'll be filming this year, but it'll be running next year, Major League Fishing. Uh, there is a buzz about Major League Fishing like no other, especially after this last season with KVD doing so well and crushing everyone. Uh, how excited are you about joining the Major League Fishing League and what are your thoughts about it? You know, the coolest thing in that I can say about it, really the main reason I signed up is the no practice, no information, you don't even know where you're going, and that's that's how I tournament fish a lot. I mean, like today, I mean, I kind of fish off in instincts, and and uh, major league fishing, it's not about what information you have or anything like that, what waypoints you have, it's about who can find fish the fastest and catch them, and, and uh, that's what gets me excited, that's what makes me want to do it just going out there and then it's, it's just a totally different uh how they weigh fish yeah, you have a live it's, it's a totally different format and, and it's just something new and like you said it's exciting it's exciting to the fans and and uh when it's that you know you can you can do a lot for your sponsor in a quarter of a mile right yeah. turn it's, onto u.s highway 270 as you can tell we're driving it, it it's actually great for the sponsors to be honest because you're getting you're getting a, a bunch more time De definite TV time that can that can showcase the people that are helping you out. Right. So, well, I appreciate everything, man. I had a good day. Uh -huh. I, I, I I've never been so quiet in my life. I should tell you. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> it's a pretty important day. I mean, it, I usually talk a lot more than I did today, but I was doing a. You were you were. I was doing a lot of thinking and trying to, you know. I mean, you just don't get many chances to do this. I mean, this could possibly be my last classic. Hopefully not. But, no, it won't be. Uh, you know, it just it gets me excited. Right turn ahead. And uh, just try to stay focused. You know, I, it was a good, it was a fun day. And you you said you were lucky, and, and you were lucky. <laughs> well, we'll see how it lasts. Uh, Jason Christie, thank you very much, brother. Fishing Florida Radio's webisodes are brought to you by Mosquito Creek Outdoors, your gateway to the outdoors. Hell's Bay Boatworks, makers of the world's finest flat skiffs. Tackle webs, clear your deck for battle. Mud hole, rod building and tackle supplies. Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there.